Well, they sure didn't make this easy to take this disk drive out. We got one screw here, one screw back there got loose. Got that screw loose, and the last one is way down there, and I don't have anything long enough to reach. And of course, the disk drive's not hardly budging. And same thing with the back plane. This is the back plane here. The same problem. The screws to get the back plane out are where is it? Way down there, and I don't have anything to reach that far. Uh, I don't know. I am also suspecting the power supply issue. When I tested the voltages on the power supply, I got voltages much higher than what uh, I should have gotten. For example, I got 16 volts, I got 13 volts, 6, and then 32, which makes no sense at all. I'm going to have but the only way to get the board out, I don't know. Gotta take all these twisty tie things off that are holding all the wires together. Yeah, it just looks like maybe just one, two, two screws. Yeah, just two screws to get the. Well, the power supply and the monitor board are all gonna come out in one. All together, which I really don't want to, because then you got all these, all these wires here that are connected to the picture tube, attached to this board, which is going to come up with the power supply. Yeah, and there's no way to unscrew the power supply board from that plate of metal because this is in the way. Yep, they really thought this through, didn't they? I don't know. Maybe you're supposed to take this bottom plastic piece off. Maybe I'm doing it wrong. <laughs> That's quite the possibility. I don't know. Maybe I'll have to explore that. Which means I'd have to lean this thing forward. Oh, I don't know. We'll get to it. Well, I finally got the disk drive out. And I tell you what, that is one impressively large disk drive. This just boggles my mind. There's a three and a half inch disk drive for comparison. <laughs> it's freaking huge. It's it's actually taller than the disk drive is wide than the floppy disk drive is three and a half inches wide that's pretty amazing <laughs> oh that down over there while we're here I'm gonna find a good spot to grab this thing I sure don't want to break it There's the tag there, made by Sugart. It's an 801. It's the model number. Runs off 115 volts. <laughs> There's the... And the belt's still in good shape. I'm looking at this switch up here. Oh, I see in the other connect. There was a... It looked like it didn't have a wire connected there. But it's actually got one way back there in the back, so it's it's an unused connection. I was like, well, that's the first problem I see, is this watch switch isn't connected to anything. But, that circuit board is filthy and nasty and dirty. And so is the rest of this disk drive. So, we're going to, I don't know, where do you start with something this big? Just throw it in the dishwasher just do a UXW bill thing and just throw it in the dishwasher and let fate handle it from there. <laughs> There's the AC motor that actually runs the uh, spindle, spins the disc. This, I think, is a DC motor. 
Let's see what this is runs the the heads back and forth. Made in Japan, 80, 1981. I can't tell, but it looks like it. Yeah, these little wires in the back. Those aren't AC wires. And then this this motor here just runs directly right off the right off the run capacitor. So as soon as the computer gets power, this thing spins up. Wonder if that's gonna tell it does have a tag on it. Let's... Fifteen hundred to eighteen hundred RPMs. Hundred and fifteen volts, sixty hertz. Oriental motor. Is that what this says? Huh. Might be Oriental motor, it's made in Japan. And we established before it's a single headed or single sided disc drive. This is just a, a cushion that puts pressure on the disc so with the read and write head on the bottom can read the disc. And there it is. That is the read and write head. And that was the eject disc this spring. <laughs> this was this little guy here just finally sprung through through rusty springs. The spring still works, but something's hanging up, so I had to figure that out. That's a nice clean mechanism down there though. There it is. Look at how shiny that is. And dry as a bone too. It's <laughs> hadn't seen a drop of grease. And it looks like it's spring loaded. It'd be interesting to see this thing in action. I think I think there's another sugar disc drive inside that disc expansion and I maybe that one's in better shape and I'll be able to see what's right and what's not about this uh about this disc drive. I do know all that whatever that is there shouldn't be there. That is nasty, nasty, nasty. Freaking run capacitor on a dang disk drive. Looks like it's in good shape though. I just hope it doesn't blow. I don't know where I'd find another one. Maybe an air conditioner capacitor would work in there. <laughs> Anyway, we'll probably take take that apart in the process of getting this going. Now we can get that back plane out. And I was looking at that back plane and it looks absolutely nasty. That could be part of the problem why this computer's the computer worked before it was shipped. Uh but I don't know how well it worked. All the capacitors on here are all the same on every board there are 33 microfarads at 50 volts while I have 33 microfarad capacitors I do not have ones that are rated for 50 volts what I wanted to show that's the memory card there this is the disk drive controller the internal disk drive connects here the external disk drive connects here what I don't know is this is a 34 pin connector. It'd be interesting if that was for a five and a quarter inch disc drive. But every solder joint on the back of this circuit board is bad. Every some of them are worse than others. Like that. But almost every one of them is in sad shape. I <laughs> it's a little overwhelming. It says 1986 on there, which is very peculiar, because part of this computer says 1982, part of it says 1986. This says 1986, that's the memory card. This is the video card, and it doesn't say anything. It says 1979. 
this is the CPU board and again nothing except for 1979 there it is I actually found me a nice nice long screwdriver that was how I was able to get the disk drive out so the power supply should come out but I wonder if that back plane is in bad shape I did not try the CPU board in another slot I suppose you could do that and then you know just a CPU board in the video board just to see if there's something comes up on the display but none oh getting back to the ooh, I'm jumping around from one subject to the next the disk drive controller seems to be the only board that's in bad shape the rest of these boards are just perfect can't seem to find anything wrong but they all use that same capacitor though that capacitor there looks like it might might be bad I, it's kinda hard to tell sometimes just looking at them unless they've actually exploded or they're actually leaking something it's kinda hard to tell the power supply I got it I got a light down in there at one point and it actually looks like some of those capacitors were replaced at one point However, this one right here is all cracked and falling apart, and this this one here is too, uh, as well as this one. I have, let's see, I have a replacement for this one. That is a looks like a .1 microfarad. This one here is a .22, which I do not have a replacement for that one. Anyway. I had a Model 3 that uh, had a capacitor that looked like this that it was starting to crack and while the computer worked just fine it lasted about oh about an hour and there was this snap crackle pop and the whole room filled up with smoke this thing smoked so bad I had to turn on an exhaust fan so that capacitor is fixing to go. We'll have to see about getting that replaced. And we got a terminal block down there. The fan down there is nasty. And it, of course, this back plane could be bad because the fan's been blowing on it and blowing gunk everywhere. So that might just be all that it is. And my parakeet is just, he's happy as a lark over there, making all kinds of noise. Anyway, moving right along.